I've just reread James Lucino's novel, Becoming Darth Vader. By the way, if anyone hasn't read it, I sincerely recommend it. There the author tried to reveal some of the moments concerning what exactly Palpatine wanted to organise. And of course, the book tells us how Anakin Skywalker turned into that very Darth Vader. Only did he? But about whether good boy Annie became the evil Darth Vader, I'll tell you separately. It's too big a topic to be dealt with in one video. For now, I'm more interested in telling you what exactly Palpatine wanted, and in fact whether he could realise it all. Darth Sidious had mega-grandiose plans. Someone told me that his empire had the disadvantage of not being able to leave an heir. After all, Sidious would have died sooner or later. And to whom would power have passed? The empire would have collapsed at the same moment. All the troubles and all that. Now Palpatine didn't really want an heir. In fact, he only needed Vader in the beginning. Afterward, he could have kept him as a tribute to tradition. But once he became truly dangerous, Sidious would have simply gotten rid of him. Why? Because Sidious was going to live and rule forever. Yes, the thing is, the ancient Sith could actually defeat death. Actually, if you think back to that dialogue in the opera, episode 3, that's where Palpatine tells part of his real story. Remember when he talks about the tragedy of Darth Plagos the Wise? Like, he was able to find a way to defeat death itself, and then he was killed in his sleep by his apprentice. Of course, Palpatine didn't tell Anakin two things, that the apprentice was himself, and that it was the secret that Plagos hadn't told him. I guess that made sense. I mean, if I told you, what would you need me for? Actually, Palpatine at that moment thought that, why do I need you? I can find out everything myself. And, as practice showed, he did, judging by the number of times he came back from the other side. There's a problem, though. Not all authors could come up with decent plots, and judging by the fact that the Empire did fall apart after the Battle of Endor, these returns alone couldn't fix anything. Although, if a good author had gotten a good writer behind it, Palpatine wouldn't have actually been on the station at the time of its demise. Well, just to preserve the Empire he held so dear. After all, for a Sith, the main object of lust is power. But I guess we'll come back to this aspect. So... Palpatine was going to rule the Empire forever. It was for this purpose that he studied the legacy of Darth Plagos. It would have been funny if he had kept all the calculations in his head and kept no records, all that was left of the other ancient Sith and everything else. Palpatine couldn't help but realise that sooner or later something would happen. Still, what he had done was certainly brilliant. But then again, here he was, stopping a war, bringing peace to the galaxy feeding everyone with promises that couldn't get any further. But sooner or later people, and non-humans too, will realise that peace and quiet is a good thing, of course. But what most people want is not peace and quiet, but some mythical freedom and democracy. So Palpatine couldn't help but realise that sooner or later people will start to realise that something has been taken away from them, that they just don't feel comfortable living without. And of course they're going to try to get it back, and so, for this purpose, Palpatine began to create a large army and a huge navy. Speaking of which, the coming Vong invasion was very timely. We had to prepare for it. And, by the way, a little remark. No, of course, Palpatine was not so much concerned with the fate of those sentients who would be destroyed or enslaved by the Vong. As you can understand, the fate of ordinary sentients was completely indifferent to him. But what about the authority? After all, as a true Sith, he loved only her. And here some guests from another galaxy come and start squeezing everything. Well, how can an honest and decent Emperor tolerate such a thing? So he prepared a warm welcome for the Vong. And at the same time, such forces will be useful to rule the galaxy, by the method of fear. So, if we believe Palpatine's thoughts, we see the image of a scheming manipulator who not only wanted to get his empire, not only wanted to get power, but knew exactly what to do with it. He wanted to rule forever, and he could do it. He wanted to get rid of Vader as soon as he was no longer needed, and that wouldn't be a problem either. In fact, Sidious had told him well enough that he could just burn the life support controller on his chest. By the way, it is believed that Palpatine personally designed the suit so that he could destroy Vader with a single wish. In the novel, Palpatine is actually a brilliant politician and strategist. And no, 
A brilliant politician is not the one who will make the life of every single intelligent person a paradise. No, a genius politician will make the state to move forward, to prosper and develop. And something tells me Palpatine had those ideas. Yes, I agree that some citizens of the Empire would have limited freedoms and liberties. For example, they could not hold rallies and gatherings. Yes, it may well be that the governors Palpatine appointed were not what he had hoped for. But here I think the issue could have been resolved. After all, the Empire was quite advanced digitally, so sooner or later Palpatine would have heard rumours that certain governors were overreaching. Again, Palpatine didn't want a happy Empire, but he wanted an effective Empire. And, using the carrot-and-stick method, he might well have succeeded. For example, he learns that a certain governor has overreached in his aspirations. Palpatine realises that he needs this sector and removes the governor, for example by sending Vader to visit him, or one of his hands. In general, the main thing is that the governor is gone, but there is evidence that he was doing all sorts of bad things, and he puts another person in his place who will not repeat the same mistakes as his predecessor. And that's it. The deed is done. Order in the sector is restored, and the locals sing Hosanna to Palpatine for taking care of the problem. So it turns out that if Palpatine's plans had been realised, the Empire would have lasted a very, very long time. After a while he'd get rid of Vader. He'd probably just die of old age or something, and Palpatine would live for a very, very long time. Though on the other hand, if I understand things correctly, there was often madness and paranoia among the Sith Lords. After all, Palpatine himself said that there was nothing more frightening to him than to lose his opportunities, although he said that about Plagos. Also, if you think back to the novel Revan, the Sith Empire shown there is a very strange place. All the Sith who held high positions there were completely insane. They constantly thought that someone was coming for them to kill them or take away their power. So we can assume that Palpatine, after a few hundred years of living like that, would have gradually gone insane too. Or we can assume that he was already insane at the time of the events of Episode 2. Why do I think that? Well, the way he tells Anakin his plans, the way he started an entire war, just to come to power by discrediting the Republic, though I feel like it would have been easier for him to do it all without the war and stuff. The Jedi had already done well enough to screw them over, the Republic was really mired in corruption and stuff like that, so reforms that would turn it into an empire were literally justified. You could justify the army with something like the story that the evil robots are coming here soon, so we're going to need a big army and a mighty navy. Palpatine's empire was very effective. Effective in, for example, waging war against any invaders. Effective in protecting its citizens from external threats. Of course, when it came to internal threats, Things weren't particularly good.